For me, it's calories in, calories out. I wasn't eating, and I was only eating like grapes and lettuce. Hello YouTube and welcome to another fat chick video. This video is sponsored by me and my small company, Proto Bakery. If you like cake donuts, check out our now available chocolate cake donut with 10 grams of protein. I eat mine every night with almond milk and a side of Bob's Burgers. Thank you all so much for the support and let's get back to the video. There is a battle happening on YouTube and it's the thins versus the fats in a new video titled, Is Being Fat a Choice by Jubilee? Which in this day and age is a heated debate. And so I have to ask you right now, is being fat a choice? I'm so curious to what you think. So I was very interested to see the different contrasts of opinions when it comes to this topic. Because you know it gets heated. And you know when it comes to obesity, well, you know, the excuses be flow. Why the bounty full? Before we get into this though, I saw Cynical guys doing like an, a bingo card whenever he does these things. I wanna play bingo too. Because whenever we talk about is being fat a choice, all these excuses come out. And there is always some reoccurring type of excuse. So I'm going to bet uh, my smallest, most feeble dog. Loves it. Stop. I'm trying, mommy's trying to talk. You won't fight back, but you guys will have to fight about how you guys work out visitation rights because there's quite a bit of you watching. So without further ado, let's look at the video. Is being fat a choice? Being fat or skinny is a choice. Agreeers? So if you're not familiar with Jubilee like middle ground, they get influencers who have opposite of opinions and, and if you agree, you walk forward and you talk it out. In this instance of the prom, two of the thins walk forward and one, of the fat actually walk for it as well. <gasps> Boiler, this man is my favorite character. Of course, not every factor is purely choice. Um, I don't think that every factor is, but I do think a majority of it is. And in most cases, for most people, being skinny or being fat um, is about willpower. So yes, as a trainer and just observing so many people, so many people blame just so many things, the thyroid, medication, genetics, and then I end up training them and they don't stick to the program. And what do they blame? Their genetics. They don't blame themselves for not sticking to a program. They just say, well, I'm not losing weight because of X thing here. Stick to a program. And I mean, really stick to a program, okay? For a year, okay? And if you come out with no result, boom, you are one of science's special cases. But most people kind of stick to something for a few weeks. Notice they only lose one pound when they expected 58. And then they give up and blame, yes, their thyroid. It's about um, the environment you grow up in, sure. Agree, if you grow up with parents with no willpower or give you whatever you want, don't monitor sugar, don't talk about health or anything, or you're very much low income and they only gave you sugar, they only gave you those really cheap type snacks, which aren't too cheap nowadays, you're probably not going to be the epitome of health. Woman, you crazy. My cooking does not make anyone fat. We are the picture of health. <laughs> as an adult until you make the choice as an adult to become healthier. But who you choose to associate with, what sort of things you choose to listen to, who you choose to kind of have as your friends around you and support you, all of those things are choices that you can make that will lead you closer towards being one or the other. And now you see why I'm deathly in love with this man. But yeah, I have a man. I'm just kidding, I don't know where I'm going with that, but I am in love with just people like him and I gravitate towards people like him because they aren't quitters, they take responsibility, people who say their opinion in a, like, a respectful way and take accountability rather than just give me a bunch of excuses and then expect me to feel sorry for them for their own choices. They should probably take a drink every time I say choices. I've said this before, the moment I stopped hanging out with people who had excuses in any type of situation. The moment I started flourishing, and I mean with anything, not just weight loss, just people who are motivated to be successful. I know what I do with my body. I know what I put into it day in and day out. I choose not to eat some days. Ooh, I forgot about this guy. So this is the thin. He has an eating problem like the opposite of me. I really like him too, and he's very level-headed as well. Um, I choose, you know, how I want to look and I don't fault anyone for how they want to look or how they want to be, but I think it's a choice at the end of the day. I agree with him, I think. I am just wondering, I guess, if he's talking about people with eating disorders, which he had. To that I say, woo! I can feel those comments just hanking it, saying that people with A-N-O-R-X-I-A -A is not a choice, it's a mental issue. People with EDs don't choose it. Okay, that's fine. I can't speak for like, 
type people. I can only speak for my type of eating. Binge eating disorder. In my opinion, at the end of the day, yes, I had a problem mentally, but at the end of the day, I chose to eat a whole cheesecake. At the end of the day, if I was going through something and I needed to eat a ton of food to make me feel happy for a moment, it was still a choice. And the moment I realized that, it really helped me make choices to deal with those feelings and not go buy everything off the dollar menu and eat it all while I watched Disney. Yeah, I had a lot of mental shit going on, but eventually I knew I had to choose something else to deal with that rather than choosing food. So like I said, I don't I don't deal with the not eating thing, but I'm wondering, do you guys think it's still kind of a mental problem where you choose to not give in to not eating? I'm very, you know, always wish-washy on how I want to be presented and if I want to gain weight or not, but the only person that's going to gain the weight at the end of the day is me and me myself. I'm curious to hear your opinion of him saying that like it's a choice. Cause I've seen so many comments saying, you know, these people struggle, like they need help, like it's not a choice, it's something that just controls you. And I'm not in this community of people. I did have a friend very much like him who struggled with that, who said she has to force herself to eat even though she doesn't want, she doesn't even like to eat. I don't understand that. I don't understand you can't like to eat. That's so out of what, I am. <laughs> but she was still saying it's still a choice. Like she knows that she can't give in to her thoughts of wanting to starve herself. So people who struggle with this, I'm very curious to know, like this is not my, my world. I don't understand it at all. So let me know in the comments. Do you think that the opposite of obesity or the opposite of like BED is still a choice? For me, it's calories in, calories out. Go to the gym, you'll get buff. Don't go to the gym, you won't <laughs> get buff. He's saying all the things that people hate, <laughs> or at least like that, that fat people, fat acceptance people hate. Calories in, calories out, they cannot stand that. Whenever a fat acceptance person like leaks into my YouTube and I say calories and calories out, you would think that I just said I, I murder a little puppy. They get pissed. But my thyroid! It's still calories in, calories out. But my PCOS! Cool, I have that too. It's still calories in and calories out. All those things make it a lot harder, more difficult. It doesn't make it impossible though. It makes it slow and most people just want results within like 30 seconds of eating a carrot. And that's just most people. Now you add on the issues of like thyroids, PCOS, all the other things, medication. It goes even slower. And most people are not patient. So then all the people who disagree walk on in and they're ready to tell them their opinion. And that's when the real fun begins. And so the first woman, Mary, says that she was a low income individual and they didn't have much of a choice when it came to food. So when we would get like free meals even then, it would be like canned food and it would be like very much food that's not as edible. And there's excuse number one, we only got canned food. Now I understand that being low income is hard. She was eating this very young, so she really didn't have a choice. She got what her parents gave her. But there's so many people that are low income and still make choices to make sure they don't get obese. Canned food is not the problem. It's portion size, which is the problem. I don't know how many bodybuilders live off of canned food. So interesting enough, I've had tuna every single day for at least a decade. I start my day with two cans of sardines. I was one that was living off of canned food and I still tend to eat similarly to how I used to when I didn't have much money. And I would live off of canned green beans, canned tuna, canned chicken. I would get a whole chicken because back then it was very cheap. I think it was like $4 for a whole chicken. Remove the skin, you're good to go. And then a big bag of rice from Walmart. And it would cost me about 35 to maybe $40 a week. Like I said, canned food's not the problem. I still eat tuna. So occasionally, and this whole thing is 110 calories, you add some rice, add some veggies, and then there you go. The problem is, is that it doesn't taste as good. So her mom probably made the choice to get the stuff that her kids would like so they would shut up and not complain about the food. They didn't have a lot of money already. Who the hell wants to stress over kids complaining about eating green beans when you can give them spaghetti? -os? I mean, let's be completely honest, which one are you gonna pick? The cool can with the cool character or something called chicken of the sea? That sounds weird as a kid. It was food for us, yes, but then I felt like once it reached a point where I was old enough to try to make my own choices, I made all of the wrong choices. But then it gets confusing. And I noticed like with this, so many people with this and so many people, she says she wouldn't eat anything. She barely ate. I wasn't eating and I was only eating like grapes and lettuce. So if she was only eating grapes and lettuce, two things that are extremely low in calories. And she said that she trained like an athlete. She was in sports all the time. They didn't have a lot of money to go be getting a lot of food. So she couldn't have been overly eating on grapes and lettuce to the point that she got obese, right? But she goes on and says that she was still big. When you I were was... eating grapes and lettuce, were you thin? I was as thin as I could be. Were you still big I though? Not. I was still big. So that wasn't, it wasn't the gotcha moment, ladies. 
that you're thinking that it was. What they're trying to prove is that, well, some people eat grapes and lettuce, work out all the time, like athletes, and they're still big. I was still big. See, she is walking proof. But that was the skinniest I've ever been. If someone is eating only grapes and only lettuce, works out like an athlete, like she said she did for a year, shit, for six months, they are going to wither away. I think I would probably die. She probably did eat lettuce and grapes at some point, but she didn't stick to it long enough to really wither away. You know, what they're trying to prove is like some people are just, they're just meant to be bigger, even if they're starving. That's scientifically impossible. You're telling me that you will stay big, like you won't die on eating lettuce and grapes and like a very low amount of calories. Like you are defying science. You will not wither away. Like we need to study you. So then one of the thins asked, do you think you could lose weight now? Do you think that right now you would not be capable of becoming a thin woman? And excuse number two is, well, I didn't uh, get blood tested when I was young. So I just can't lose weight as an adult. At least that's what I got from it. You tell me what you get. I you possibly to. would be capable of becoming a thin woman, but since I was young, I was supposed to get blood tested probably when I was very, very young and I never did. And they had mentioned that it could have been because of my weight and how that connects with my thyroid. <laughs> Bingo! There it is, the thyroid. It's always that damn thyroid. This is what I'm talking about when I say I can't hang out with people like this. I can't be around the people that are like, well, when I was young and this, and, and now that I'm old, it's this, and it's my thyroid. I want people that say, this is what affects me as a kid, but I want to change it because now, I'm an adult. Not my parents didn't help me and now I can't help myself. Like leaning parents to be like, go and get checked out, go and do this. Like, and I get that. I had so much anger, like a lot of anger. An, an, un, an unhealthy amount of anger toward my parents for not getting my sugar under control. My binge. Especially when I started asking my thin friends how they were brought up and they would tell me that their parents would always, you know, give them healthy food. They wouldn't keep certain foods in their house. They would always monitor their food, their sugar, everything like that. And I would just get so angry because because why the hell did my mom do that to me? And then I had to realize, Michelle, you know what? You're an adult, you grew up like that, but now you can change it. Is it gonna be harder? Of course, but you have the choice as a full functioning adult to live the way that you want to live. This chick is an influencer. She can make the choice to go get help, to take the steps to lose weight. At a certain point, we all have to realize it's no longer on our parents anymore. It's all your fault, all your fault. I mean, I also struggle with you know, thyroid and my own mm -hmm. blood issues. I'm not quite sure, but I do see an endocrinologist and I go see a doctor. And that's the difference, people. There's the types that say, oh, I have a thyroid issue. I'll do absolutely nothing to figure this out and just say I'm fat because of the thyroid. Then there's the people who say, okay, how do I work with this to get to my goal? It's a choice mm -hmm. to do the requisite steps. It's a choice to go grocery shopping instead of going to fast food when it's easy. I don't think they're liking this, but I do have to say they are keeping their composure very well versus what I see people go crazy online. But just seeing how these people talk, I highly doubt that they are making the same food choices as a thin woman that seems like she really pays attention to what she eats. Most likely, they probably aren't even realizing how much they eat. They probably eat out a lot. They probably don't track the calories. They probably don't even read food labels. Most of America doesn't. I went out the other day and I don't like eating out. I prefer eating at home because I have a sensitive stomach now. It was my boyfriend's dad's birthday, so. So I went along to join in with the festivities. Day before I go, I look up the menu online to check the calories. Preparation is key rather than being bombarded and making a quick choice. Every Everything was over a thousand calories or at least close to a thousand calories. I ended up getting a sausage on a plate because that was 300 calories. And this is what my home meals look like, which keep me completely full. I just don't believe that the women, the bigger women on this panel go through even that much trouble to check what they're putting in their bodies. I think they would just order. So then we get to our next excuse and it's, well, I'm disabled. As a disabled woman, I can't do a lot of the things that people say calories in, calories out. Isn't that kind of rude? She's kind of insinuating that disabled people just can't count calories. Calories in, calories out. She's burning calories while she's sitting there. So she just needs to find out how many calories she's burning through the day since she can't work out like someone that's not disabled and then slightly lower her calories. But she's just saying, well, I'm disabled, can't do that. Oh, you gotta go work out and exert it. And this is where the lack of education comes in. I think, I think many people 
think they have to freaking murder themselves in the gym. Some people think they have to lift weights like a bodybuilder, run miles, and then swim 20 after that. You don't have to do that. There's people that can't work out like that and they still make food choices that keep them at a healthy weight. Especially if you're disabled, do you really want to be disabled and obese at the same time? I feel like it would just make everything worse. A lot of the things that are typical, oh, this is how you lose weight, put me in the hospital. A slight calorie deficit, eating vegetables, lean proteins, and fruits landed you in the hospital? I have absolutely never heard this before. This is new. My weight is the way it is because of medication, because doctors put me in this position. Excuse number two, it's the doctor's fault now. <laughs> I don't know the background. I don't know the medication that she's on. She never, she never really gets into that, which is probably the best for her because, you know, if you don't say it, now we can't look it up and hold her accountable. So I get it. So then she goes into the BOPO type talk and says, I could either love my body or hate it. And I had to learn, okay, am I going to be so hateful of my own body that I am going to backlash and put myself through extreme gym nights, through keeping myself from eating things that I should be able to eat. You no one said that you have to be Brad Castleberry. <laughs> all day long. <gasps> like she, a little walk is just fine. She walked from the point A to point B right there. We saw her. Walking is great. I do it all the time. It's such an underrated exercise. And I think she's one of those people that think, oh, I have to be in the gym. Like a freaking TikTok fitness model. Absolutely not. And I have to say that she seems very outdated because I don't see a lot of people promoting working out for two hours, three hours. I see a lot and it's surprising, a lot of bodybuilders saying if you're in the gym for over an hour, you're not getting a very quality workout or you're over training. And I definitely don't see people saying and promoting to starve themselves like I did before. Those are gone. There is so many resources showing people of different sizes, different problems, different disorders, how they adjust to their life and stay healthy. But I swear to God, these people are always just kind of like, nope, it's only me, I'm the main character and then I, I can't do it, therefore it is not possible. You should be able to have a balance. You should be able to go into the junk food aisle like other skinny people do and still not have to worry about gaining 20 pounds. But I mean, if certain foods affect you health-wise with whatever's going on, wouldn't you avoid those foods? For example, I absolutely love hot Cheetos. I used to be able to eat whole bags of them, but now that I'm older, my acid reflux says absolutely not. And last time I said, it's not fair, I'm gonna eat it like all the thin people. And it landed me in the hospital. Acid reflux is no freaking joke, people, let me tell you. That hurt. Now wouldn't I look a little foolish if I said, I should be able to eat hot Cheetos like all the other people. It makes me happy. Sometimes drugs makes people happy. That's not good. It's just life. I completely believe in moderation, but there's some things that you just can't eat unless you want to deal with the consequences. Once again, choices. I don't think skinny people go into people. this junk food aisle. They wrong. The thin is wrong. It's, I completely do not agree with that. And they, I'm happy that all the people on there told her. Even the thin people were like, uh, absolutely not. I eat junk food. I think that's certainly. Yes. They do. They eat a lot of junk food. Yeah. It's like when people say bodybuilders only eat chicken. No, some bodybuilders are like the worst, unhealthiest, most eating junk food people when they're off season. Binge eaters, actually. That's when my binge eating like skyrocketed once I got into bodybuilding. You don't do it for health reasons, okay? There's a thing called set points. There's a ton of research on it. So set point theory states that the human body tries to maintain its weight within a preferred range. Many people stay within a more or less range of body weight throughout their adult life. It is studied a lot, or there's a lot of studies on it, but it's still technically a theory, I guess. I do agree with it at some point. My body feels great right here. When I was doing a bodybuilding, yeah, I can get smaller, but it's like a whole ass thing to, to get to that lean point. But a lot of the people in the body positive community will take this set point weight and say, many people's bodies are supposed to be like this. And at the same time, they're eating a bunch of shit. They are overeating, they're binge eating. And just say, well, you know, set point theory. And this is where my body's happy at. That your body likes to be at specific Yep. It likes to be in a specific way. No, you have no willpower. You're low educated when it comes to food intake. You're not checking food labels. And a lot of you guys are addicted to food and get a dose of dopamine whenever you eat it. That's why you think you're happy. Your knees, organs, and other joints, and honestly, your whole body is not too happy. Damn near killing yourself to be at a specific weight. Your body's unhappy. I agree with this. I don't believe in like killing yourself in the gym, eating so little to stay a certain 
weight and you know that's not natural but the pure audacity to say people that are forcing themselves to be thin or like super fit is not healthy but not talking about the other side of people who are literally killing themselves through overeating is just wild but i expect it it's important to note, note that a choice can be harder for people to make due to conditions in their life yes. mm -hmm. but at the end of the day it's still a choice look at their faces i know I know, I know it. Some of you will have paragraphs down there. No, Michelle, um, but, but, and I mean, my cousin's sister's boyfriend's side chick is like, what? In most of these situations, it's still a choice. We all have something. I know you guys think that you are special, and you are, but in reality, everybody has something going on to make this harder, to make life harder. Some harder than others, and you just have to work with it. Yes, but I definitely still acknowledge that it was my choice. At the end of the day, when I go there and I look and I see, hmm, should I order a second hamburger? I'm the one choosing whether or not I order that second hamburger. I'm the one making that choice. And that's what they ended with. And no one had nothing else to say, I guess. And if you take all of the women's excuses they had as to why they were fat, they were still all choices. Fat chick number one said her parents never taught her healthy food choices and they didn't take her to the doctor. Okay, well now you're an adult. Now you can educate yourself and you can take your own butt cheeks to the doctor. Fat chick number two said she's disabled and can't count calories. Apparently she was never taught math in school, but she has a cell phone and it has a calculator. You can look up on Google on how to use Use it. Also, there's apps. All, her other excuse was, well, she can't work out like everyone else. But there are plenty of people who are not like everybody else who can't exercise. We saw her walk to the chair. That is great. That's her exercise. There was a huge split when it came to the thins and that one obese man where the fat people had the victim mentality and the thin people really took accountability. They knew their problems. If they had problems, they worked with it. And even the super thin guy who says that he has a lot of problems, like he knew his problem is that, he, that some days that he didn't eat, but he knows exactly what he's doing and he's making that choice. I really enjoyed it. And I think you guys will enjoy when we cover the next segment when they talk about Lizzo. I'm Maybe sorry, that's, there's, there's, a that's very, a there's a very yeah. difference between the people who are telling people go out and get fat versus a I Lizzo who's so saying fat. accept yeah. me the way I am. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to order your donuts. I linked everything below. And remember, you do not have to be a side. Two. Big biceps are great to have, but they are not needed to be healthy. You do not need to be in the gym for hours, and disabled people can count calories. But health is extremely important, and excuses are not going to get you there. I will see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching. You have a fabulous day. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Ooh. You see the drip, yeah, I'm fitted up. Hop in my car and the giddy up. Secure the bag, yeah, I get the bus. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. You see the drippy, I'm fitted up. Fit up. Hop in my car and a giddy up. Secure the back, yeah, I get the bus. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Ooh, I've been on the flex since flex zone. Neighborhood all in your eardrums.